Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today, I wanna to talk about FQHCs. What is an FQHC? Have you heard of it before? Maybe you've heard of it, but you don't really know what it is. I wanted to give a very high overview of an FQHC just to put it out there so people can kind of learn a little bit more about it. And if it's something that you're interested in because you're a primary care provider, then I would encourage you to do a lot more research in this topic because it might be something that interests you, but there are a lot of ins and outs in order to qualify to become an FQHC. So what is an FQHC? It's a federal qualified healthcare center. That means that you have a primary care office that is offering primary care services, preventive services, focusing on the preventive for people who are underserved, that are maybe in a location that doesn't have a lot of resources, and it can be rural or urban. It doesn't have to be just in one or the other and there are a lot of requirements in order to become recognized as an FQHC. Once you are recognized and you're a certified FQHC, you have different goals that you have to reach and you have a different fee schedule from Medicare and Medicaid in which you get paid. You are going to most likely receive grants or be eligible for grants and you are going to be kind of the epicenter of care for people in which are enrolled in your healthcare center. There are a lot of requirements. It's a lot of work, but I have heard from people who have done it that it is painstakingly a lot of work, but it's rewarding. And if you are set out to try to serve and help the people in places that need you, that are underserved, that are underinsured, that are sick and need help with preventive medicine, then this is definitely for you. As a provider, you're going to need someone who is well versed in this or really good at researching, understanding, and kind of taking it by the reins because there are so many moving parts that have to be done in order for you to go through all the steps. And sometimes you have to implement some of these things before you even become a, fe a federally qualified healthcare system. So you kind of start um, adopting and implementing things along the way and check boxes. And it, it's quite a, a lengthy process and you can find all this information. There's multiple resources out there. The internet is wonderful. But you know, just for example, some of the things are, uh, if people cannot pay for their services, that you still offer the services because that's part of being uh, federally qualified, right? Like you're kind of getting those uh, cost incentives or support, uh, financial support from the government in order to offer these services. Another thing is that you have to have hours open longer than normal traditional uh, clinics. So instead of it being an eight to five, nine to five type of, type of situation, you might have to offer hours seven to nine or something like that. Uh, weekends, you have to be available all the time. You can't have an answering service. You have to be able to have a provider that can answer calls and be available to treat or at least assist in treating and guiding patients on treatments. Um, there are some pretty stringent things that are definitely doable, but you would also have to find the right staff, the right other providers to help support you in this. Um, I'm sure that there are some smaller practices out there that are federally qualified health centers that make this work, especially in smaller rural towns or in areas where there's not a lot of options for staff. But in my experience, some of the requirements that I've reviewed it seems like it would be best to have a little bit more staff to be able to accommodate those requirements. So you might be asking about what's the difference between an FQHC and a rural health center. And basically the rural health center is 
like the FQHC, but it's just for treating Medicare insured patients. And it is in a rural setting where it's very underserved. There are no good resources there or very limited resources. And so you are kind of the epicenter of that situation and you're coordinating care for those Medicare insured patients, just like an FQHC is the epicenter and coordinating care for all of those patients that are underserved, underinsured. So FQHC is Medicare, Medicaid, and uninsured, and then you have the rural health where it's really focusing on Medicare. And that's just a high level overview. But if you are interested in this, there's a lot of resources. Definitely reach out to your Medicaid program in your state. Also look into your MAC for Medicare. You do have to be approved, and so they come on site and they actually will, uh, not just once, but they'll be giving you the checklist and telling you what you need to go through and what you need to do to qualify, and they have to give you that stamp of approval. So again, those are the places where probably you're gonna have the best resources. They usually have telephone numbers you can call and speak with people who kind of oversee these programs that can kind of guide you, give you tips, and there's a lot of stuff to read out there and it can be a little overwhelming and cumbersome but if you're serious about it then just take it in stride make sure you do a lot of planning before you just jump into it i think that's going to be the best advice i can give you is don't just say we're going to do this and jump into it i mean i would definitely do all your research ahead of time and phase in some of these things before you really start to adopt um, and want to qualify and take the steps to become certified just to make sure it works for you, it works for the other providers, the managers, the billers, the staff. It affects everybody, right? And But it's a really great thing that there is for people out there. And if you aren't sure if you wanna do it or not, maybe look into a local FQHC or rural health center in your area that you could go visit and shadow and pick the brain of the people who work there or manage it and just see if it really is something that you could do and you want to do because this is a commitment. This isn't a short-term thing. This is something where the community and people are going to be relying on you. It's not like you're just going to be seeing patients once or twice a year. These are usually chronically ill patients. These are people who need you to help coordinate things. They need you to offer certain tests, make sure that they're doing their preventive measures, such as pap smears, physicals, colonoscopies, lab work. I mean, it's a big thing. So, you know, definitely make sure that you look at everything before making the commitment because you're going to have a lot of people relying on you. If you have any experience actually working or setting up an FQHC or even a rural health center, please leave that in the comments below and share your experience. If you have any other advice for people that are looking at doing this, then please leave that in the comments as well. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for the support, you guys. I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.